Good morning, everyone. Um, so let's get started with electrochemistry. This time, uh, we're going to talk a little bit again about the Nernst equation and then move on to uh, electrodes and using that electrochemistry as an actual probe in our instrumental chemistry. Uh, or we're, of course, going to be analyzing some sort of concentration or something like that, or even just the presence of some sort of ion. But um, we're going to be talking about how those electrodes can really help us um, with a specific example, really, of um, being the pH meters. Um, pH meters are like a really just a very good example of um, the use of these sort of electrodes. So the Nernst equation, so um, this has got two terms in it. One which is related to kind of the response of whatever particular um, species we're using to um, an electrical potential and the other is dependent on the concentration. So you can think of one term as being like the basic um, molar standard conditions uh, electric potential and then the other thing being like kind of how it changes based on how much of it is present. So the concentration dependent term. So the Nernst equation can be derived uh, under standard conditions uh, which are 298.15 Kelvin and one atmosphere that's about um, 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure is just really standard pressure um, at sea level. Um, and can be described by this reaction. So um, this is our standard potential. Whenever we say standard, what we mean is standard conditions. Standard potential is equal to the standard potential of the reduction reaction minus the standard potential of the oxidation reaction. Usually this oxidation reaction is um, like a reference reaction. Uh, maybe it's the standard calomel electrode. Maybe it's the standard hydrogen electrode. Um, so it's just usually like one of those um, reference electrodes. Um, so recall then that we, we, we encountered this at the start of yesterday's session where delta G, which is uh, delta G under standard conditions, which is the Gibbs free energy change is equal to minus NF uh, times the standard potential. So N is the number of electrons which are transferred. F is uh, the Faraday constant. And then E is this E up here. So from thermodynamics, and this might be going a little bit back for you, but um, thermodynamics has an equation below here where we can compare the actual uh, change in free energy with the change of free energy under standard conditions via this reaction here. Um, or this equation here where delta G is equal to delta G um, under standard conditions plus RT uh, natural log of Q where R is the um, universal gas constant and T is the temperature and uh, this natural log of Q, Q being the reaction quotient. So that's going back to um, equilibrium constants and things like that. So uh, the terms in this, like this is, what it would be under standard conditions. And then this is a term which changes it based on the actual temperature that we're dealing with. And however, uh, to whatever side the equilibrium actually lies. Um, and of course, since we have this equation in terms of something which is the standard free energy change, then we can of course substitute this into this equation. It's just mathematics. So we substitute um, both of these terms into this. Um, we substitute the non-standard and the standard term, and now we have a new equation in terms of the potential of the system. Um, so there's a lot of things that we can now do. So we're now getting closer to the Nernst equation. So if we divide through by minus NF, so we get NF on only one side. So if we divide through by minus NF, then we're going to get this equation, this new equation here, where E is equal to... Um, Uh, the standard uh, the standard potential minus this term here, which is R T N F L N Q, where the terms were all on the standard ones. Um, that should actually be plus because we divide it through by um, we divide it through by N F. So under standard conditions and conversion to log to the base ten, we then get this equation, which is our Nernst equation. So what we've done here is we have changed the natural log to the log to the base 10, which has then changed the sign here. And then we have multiplied through by our um, 
constants. So our constants are R, F, and T, T being 25 degrees Celsius or 298.15 Kelvin, because we're dealing with this under standard conditions. And so that's how we get our Nernst equation. Um, so it's based on things that we've already encountered and know. So again, um, the Nernst equation, we saw this last time as well, so I won't spend too much time doing this. The Nernst equation for a complete cell is given here. Um, so that's just the, this is the one, the reduction, this is the um, standard reference or well, the um, oxidation at the very least. Um, so E plus is the potential of the electrode attached to the positive terminal. E minus is the potential of the electrode attached to the negative terminal. The potential of each half reaction is written uh, as a reduction is governed by the Nernst equation, which we just derived on the previous slide. And then the voltage of the complete reaction is the difference between the two half reactions. Because it's uh, the way to describe the whole equation or the whole um, cell is using this equation. And this has got a minus sign, so that means it's going to be the difference. Um, so uh, some steps in finding the voltage uh, by its net cell reaction. So we, of course, first write reduction half reactions for both half cells and find the standard potential for each. Um, so these are like, um, yeah, there's two parts to the cell. There's the reduction part and the oxidation part, but we're gonna write the reactions which happen in both sides as reductions. That means that they're both going to be written so that they gain electrons. Even though that's not actually uh, how it happens for one of them, uh, one of them is gonna be an oxidation. We still write it out that way and then we just reverse it and change the sign later on. So uh, multiply the half reactions so that they contain the same number of electrons. When you multiply a reaction, you do not multiply the um, standard potential. Um, this is important not to multiply the standard potential. So for example, say one of the reactions involved two electrons. You would, in order, need, in order to get the balanced overall equation, you would need to multiply the other one by some number to get to two electrons. I mean, it could be that it also uses two electrons and that's great. Sometimes it only uses one. And so in that case, we need to um, take that into account and multiply by two. Then uh, write a Nernst equation for the right half cell attached to the positive terminal of the potentiometer. This is E plus. Usually this is the reduction reaction. Uh, write a Nernst equation for the left half cell attached to the negative terminal of the potentiometer. And this is E minus. So this is usually the um, oxidation reaction. And then find the net cell voltage by the difference of the two terms. So the two terms are E plus and E minus. So we then just find the difference between these two terms or these two half cells. And then write the next, or sorry, write the net cell reaction by subtracting the left half cell from the right half reaction. Okay, so then the standard potential and the equilibrium constant. Galvanic cells produce electricity because they are not at equilibrium. Um, so this is one of the principles governing the behavior of our batteries that we have in uh, our, uh, well, the disposable batteries, like AA batteries, AAA batteries, that kind of thing. And uh, the C batteries, the D batteries, those kinds of things, even car batteries um, as a galvanic cell. So when a battery reaches zero volts, the chemicals inside have reached equilibrium and the battery is dead. At this point, E is equal to zero and Q is equal to K, the equilibrium constant. So Q is equal to K at equilibrium. So Q is called the reaction quotient, if we recall from equilibrium, um, which is both of them are products of reaction reactants. But uh, K is a special form of Q, which happens at the equilibrium. And it represents how much of the reactants have been converted into products. So um, that means that at this point, um, since E is equal to zero, we remove that first term. And then we just have the term which is re related to concentration. And so uh, here we have the uh, standard potential at um, whenever the battery is effectively dead is equal to this term here, where N is the number of electrons transferred in the half reaction, and then log of K, where K is the equilibrium constant. This means that we can find the equilibrium constant if we know, if we can measure the standard potential, we can know the equilibrium constant, K, because we just rearrange this equation. T 
to get k in terms of the um, standard potential and the like the number of electrons transferred and then this um, term here which is based on the rt over f part um, so this the the power here is really the ability to um, accurately determine the value for the equilibrium constant uh, for a particular reaction uh, just based on the standard potential of that um, particular cell. So we talked about this one as well before, where we have copper and iron um, reacting together. So the copper is um, going to be losing electrons, so it's going to be oxidized, and the iron is gaining an electron and is being reduced. So we split this up into two half cells. So you can see that we write both as reductions, even though only one is actually a reduction. Um, this uh, reaction for copper is actually um, an oxidation here in this reaction, but uh, we write it down as a reduction here for the purposes of our um, uh, preparation for the calculation. So we then find the um, standard potential for the net reaction. So the standard potential is equal to the, the reduction reaction minus the oxidation reaction. And then so we fill those terms in here. Um, and so we get um, 0 0.432. So we've taken the terms here from the uh, reduction and oxidation uh, half cells, both written as reductions. So these are the, um, the signs in front of the terms. And then we've put them directly in here. Um, and then we've gotten the standard potential value here. And so we compute for K then um, by just plugging in those values. We've got this here, which is the, um, the standard potential for this net reaction. We've plugged that in here. And then uh, the number of electrons transferred in the standard half reaction is two. Um, and so we end up with an uh, equilibrium constant of 4 times 10 to the 14. This is a very large equilibrium constant. And we get uh, that indicates to us that this reaction proceeds very rapidly under these conditions. So small values of uh, the standard potential can produce large k values. OK, so that's where we stopped last time. So let's begin with the new stuff. So uh, relating the standard potential and the equilibrium constant. So uh, we're going to do another calculation where we're going to calculate the equilibrium, or sorry, the standard potential for the following reaction, which is uh, a nickel glycine um, complex, which is uh, going to be reduced um, to form the nickel metal plus two glycinate. Um, well, in this case, they're acting as ligands. They're basically complexing our nickel. They're capturing it in solution and making it soluble. But by the addition of electrons, we're able to deposit some nickel on the surface of our electrode. So um, we would then be looking up uh, two things. Um, probably these would be given to us in the question, or we would be asked to find one of them. So I'm given the other. So the, uh, nic the nickel 2 plus uh, plus 2 um, glycinate um, gives the complex has an equilibrium constant K, which is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the 11. Um, so this is related to the uh, constant beta, which we encountered uh, last time. So nickel two plus plus two electrons gives nickel metal. And so that's going to be um, with the standard potential here of minus 0 0.236 volts. Okay, so um, the standard potential is equal to that which happens at the reduction minus that which happens at the oxidation and K can be used to determine the standard potential. So remember on the previous slide, we saw that K um, can be found from the system at equilibrium when the voltage is zero. So that's going to give us um, 10 to the power of, uh, what was that? N E over, um, was it 0 0.05916? Um, or we can just use the, uh, what we actually want to find out, sorry, is actually this, the standard potential, which is just going to be equal to um, 0 0.05916 over N times uh, log of K. Okay. 
So um, anyone want to hazard a guess what N might be in this system? Um, just think about it. You can write it down in the, the chat. It's fine. Okay, so uh, yes, indeed, the value for n in this case would be two because n represents the number of electrons in the half cell. It doesn't represent like a, a sign. It's like just the absolute number of electrons. It doesn't need to be like taken away or added together. It's just this number here, two in the half cell. So on the previous slide, um, in one of the half reactions, sorry. So even though like uh, there's often two half reactions where um, you have electrons um, in both of the half reactions, involved in both of the half reactions. It's actually only the sort of over, like in one of them, in this case, um, the two electrons here in the nickel. And in the previous case, it was also two electrons um, involved in either the copper or the iron. So um, here we use this equation, which we had on the previous um, one, uh, previous slide, and then we fill in the value. So two goes here. Um, the k value goes here, and then we can find the um, the value for the total cell reaction, which is going to be 0 0.328 volts. So, um, or sorry, that's the oxidation reaction. So then um, we can fill in the values here for um, the reduction reaction, which is this one here, um, which had this value here. Um, and then we have the oxidation reaction, which is going to be um, this one here, which is the formation of the complex. Um, and then we get a value of minus 0 0.564 volts. So that's how, um, so we thought we didn't know um, this uh, reaction here. We didn't know, or sorry, we didn't know this one, the oxidation reaction, um, but we did know um, the equilibrium constant for that. And because we knew the equilibrium constant and we were assuming that we were working at equilibrium, um, we were able to find the standard potential for that. We just filled it into our equation here and then we got this value 0 0.328 volts. And then we uh, fill that into our um, expression here for the total cell. Um, and then we were able to get the potential for the net potential for the overall cell. And that uh, enabled us to um, enabled us to get um, the final net cell um, potential. Okay, so we've seen there in a couple of examples of how um, certain voltages can happen when we have certain reactions happening. So the previous one was like um, the reaction of uh, nickel glycinate complex um, forming either nickel metal or forming the complex. Uh, it was also, we also saw then um, previously the oxidation reduction of a, a solution of copper and iron. Um, and those both produce different potentials for the total cell, um, different potentials also for the half cells. So, um, since we're very good as humans of creating electrical circuits and being able to determine how much electricity is moving through those circuits, um, what we can do is we could actually, um, if we had a catalog of values, we could actually determine accurately what we have in a particular system and how much of that we have based on um, the amount of uh, potential there is in the system. And so that's exactly what we're going to see examples of happening. So a chemical reaction that occurs within a half cell will reach equilibrium and is to maintain uh, remain at equilibrium. So uh, eventually you're going to reach equilibrium. Um, no matter where you start from, whether you start from like uh, an abundance of uh, products or a, an abundance of re, uh, reagents, you'll always eventually reach equilibrium. 
Um, and so this reaction is not the net cell reaction. It's just one of the half cell reactions. So this is a half cell. This is a half cell. This is the whole net cell reaction. And so uh, for this system, which is, if I go back, it's easier to read. Um, here, the standard hydrogen electrode is here. Um, and then we have here um, acetic acid and sodium acetate in solution, um, which forms a, something called a buffer, um, which was encountered back in, uh, well, encountered in your acids and bases lectures, I'm sure. And then um, here we have uh, the half cell, which is based on silver, silver chloride, which we saw in the first session. So uh, the half reactions here are the right hand half cell. So that's going to be um, the one attached to the positive uh, terminal. And so that's going to be happening. What happens there is a reduction. So we have here the silver chloride in, is going to be um, deposited from the, it's going to be a layer of silver chloride deposited on the silver electrode. Um, and then on the left half cell reaction, we have a the reaction of acetic acid to produce acetate and hydrogen plus ions. Those hydrogen plus ions um, can be used um, in the standard hydrogen electrode. So these have come to equilibrium, but neither reaction is part of the net cell reaction. Um, the redox reaction for the right half cell is going to be silver chloride plus an electron gives silver metal plus the chloride. So we're getting silver metal attached or um, deposited here. And then the redox reaction for the left half cell is based on the acidity of the solution. So we've got two um, H plus plus two electrons gives us a hydrogen gas and uh, hydrogen gas bubbles off. You can kind of see these little bubbles which are happening. Um, so that hydrogen gas is um the one that is being provided to the system and then it is reacting um, to form h plus ions in solution plus some electrons and the reason why we have the buffer here is so that the ph here doesn't change dramatically so the nernst equation for the net cell reaction is of course the um the total potential is equal to the potential at the positive electrode minus the potential at the negative electrode. And so that's going to be um, standard hydrogen electrode, um, which is this one over here. And then this one is going to be based on what's happening on the reduction side, which is where the silver silver chloride is. Um, and so we're gonna have it in terms of the chloride concentration. And then on the other side, we have zero here because remember the standard hydrogen electrode is always set to zero just arbitrarily and everything is based um, with reference to that. And then this value here is the um, reduction potential here for the silver. Um, so we can't really measure the concentration of our solid silver because it's a solid and a pure solid is a pure solid. So it's like concentration is not really like a concentration is a comparison of something in something else like chloride in water is a concentration that we can measure silver just existing um is is not something we can necessarily measure we can measure the number of moles that we have but um we cannot measure the concentration um and then the chloride here is what we can measure so we can measure this um, and this is the um standard potential which is happening over here for the reaction which is happening there so fill that value in, fill zero in for the standard hydrogen electrode. Then we have the concentration dependent term here and here. Um, so this one is based only on the chloride ion because we're going from silver chloride, which is a solid to chloride plus silver, which is silver is still a solid. So the only concentration that remains is the chloride um, from our uh, reaction quotient or uh, equilibrium constant. So then, um, on this side, we have the reaction which happens for the oxidation reaction. So the number of electrons which are being transferred are two. Um, here we have um, partial pressure of hydrogen gas, um, which is like one bar typically. Um, and then we have over this the concentration of protons which are in solution. So the only unknown here is the proton concentration. Therefore, the measured voltage allows us to find 
uh, the proton concentration in the left hand cell, uh, assuming we were given the chloride ion concentration, which was 0 0.1. Um, so uh, we measured the voltage, the voltage measured is here. We know the concentration of the solution, which is here, 0 0.1. So um, filling in those values, the only thing we don't know is the proton concentration, um, H plus concentration. So we can then rearrange the equation to find that. To evaluate the equilibrium constant for the acid-base reaction that has come to equilibrium in the left-hand cell, we um, use our equilibrium constant, which is here. Um, so these are the concentrations of our two species, our uh, acetate, our sodium acetate, and then this is the concentration of our protons. This is the equilibrium constant Ka, which is products over reactants from the reaction which was happening there, which was um, acid in equilibrium with its uh, conjugate base and its, uh, well, the proton in solution. And um, since it's a weak acid, um, we're making the assumption that the concentration um, before and after dissociation are the same and that, or effectively the same. And then we can find the Ka value here. Okay, so write the two half cell reactions. So okay, survival tips for doing these types of things. Um, always start off with like um, looking at the uh, what do you call this? Looking at the overall reaction for the system. Then uh, try to determine which one is being oxidized, which one is being reduced. So a good way to start is always to use the oil rig. Um, so which one is gaining electrons? So which species is going to be um, having electrons added to it and which species is going to have electrons removed from it. That's the oil, oil, uh, oil rig is oil rig is oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So write the two half reactions and their standard potentials. If you choose a half reaction for which you cannot find the standard potential, then find another way to write the reaction. Uh, write a Nernst equation for the net reaction and put it in all the known, put in all the known quantities. If all is well, there will only be one unknown in the equation. Yeah. So um, in all the calculation, or sorry, all of the questions pretty much that I would ever give you on this, um, and you wouldn't get very many Nernst equations in one exam, um, probably just one at the most, um, you would need to write out the Nernst equation for that particular half cell. And then most likely in the, the whole scheme of things, the only thing you would need is one value. And that one value is what you're trying to calculate for the answer to the question. Then solve for the unknown concentration and use that concentration to solve the chemical equilibrium problem that was originally posed. So this is whenever we are comparing um, or trying to use the net cell potential to calculate um, the equilibrium constant. So uh, a special form of the um, what do you call this? of the standard potential is the standard potential prime, uh, which is um, used by biochemists because they're particularly interested in pH changes and maintaining pHs because a lot of biological tissues are pH dependent. So the pH inside a plant or animal cell is about seven. Um, so radax potentials that apply at pH zero are not really appropriate. So we, well, they basically have this special version um, which takes into account um, a lot of the things which are necessary to maintain life in a normal plant or animal cell. So the standard potential for a redox reaction is defined for a galvanic cell in which all activities are unity. So that's pretty standard. And we're assuming that everything is working at 100% of its efficiency. And so the formal potential is the reduction potential that applies under a specified set of conditions. And so biochemists call this the formal uh, potential at pH 7, uh, the uh, standard potential prime. Usually like this kind of like a little asterisk or not asterisk, apostrophe is uh, when applied to some sort of an equation uh, is called prime. So what exactly is um, the standard potential prime? And how does it relate to what we actually know, which is the um, 
standard potential. So we have the Nernst equation for the half reaction given as such here, where we have um, some species A to, to the stoichiometric coefficient A uh, reacting with some quantity of electrons to give us the, and this could be an ion, for example, it's not unreasonable that it might be an ion. And then this is going to be giving us a product B and a product H plus, which is the protons. And that's going to be described by the standard potential here. And so this gives us this Nernst equation here, um, where we have um, potential for this half cell is equal to the standard potential for that half cell minus this concentration dependent term, where we have um, just this constant part here, where n is of course from up here, log of the reaction quotient for the system. Uh, the reaction quotient is the same as the equilibrium constant if we are at equilibrium. Okay, so then we want to rearrange the Nernst equation to form to form containing the formal concentrations for A and B. Um, so the formal concentrations are written here with F. So um, we rearrange this in this sense here, where E is equal to E. Uh, the standard potential um, plus other terms which are dependent on um, the sort of like corrections for the biological system uh, minus this part here which is the concentration dependent part which is based on the concentration of B over the concentration of A. Um, don't worry too much about the, the idea of formal concentrations. Generally um, it's basically just the same as a regular concentration in most senses. So not always, but most of the time. Um, so the only real time whenever it comes into play is um, whenever we have a substantial dissociation, um, which happens in acid systems. So to convert the concentration of A or concentration of B into FA or FB, we need a fractional composition uh, equations which relate the formal concentration of all terms of an acid or base to its concentration in a particular form. So for a monoprotic system, uh, the concentration of HA is equal to alpha HA F. So what does that mean? It means the fraction of F, the total concentration, which is actually HA, is equal to this, where it's um, concentration of H plus ion. So you can get that from the pH, remember. Like if the pH is 7, you can get uh, the concentration of uh, protons. Um, times F, and then this is over H plus plus Ka, and then uh, the A minus concentration is equal to the fraction um, of the formal concentration that is A minus, um, and then that is given this term here, where Ka is the equilibrium constant. So that's for a monoprotic system, which is HA um, is in equilibrium with H plus... Um, plus A minus. Okay. And then for a diprotic system, we have uh, the concentration of H2A is equal to the fraction of this, which is H2A times F, which is equal to this um, here. Um, so this is just the concentration of the protons, which again, you can get from um, pH and then times F, which is the formal concentration. Um, F, the formal concentration is like, you'd be given to you most likely. Um, over H plus squared plus H plus uh, times K1 plus K1 times K2. If you remember, this is a diprotic system, so there's two deprotonations, if you recall from your acids and bases lectures before. Um, first is this equilibrium here where we have HA minus plus H plus, and then the second deprotonation, which is HA minus, this is the deprotonated, um, in equilibrium with A minus A plus H plus. So like you, a lot of amino acids are diprotic acids um, and a common like other diprotic acid, but this, you wouldn't really see this so much in biological systems is sulfuric acid. Um, mostly you'd be dealing with things like amino acids. And the other thing to remember is that uh, this second term is basically negligible um because like so this has k1 sorry equilibrium constant one equilibrium constant two so um this is how you get the formal concentration of or sorry the concentration of h2a 
based on the formal concentration of HA minus is given here. Um, and then H or A2 minus is given here, um, where basically um, it's still looking at the, the total number of protons which are in the system. The concentration of the protons can typically be determined by the uh, pH, and oftentimes the pH is seven, especially for biological systems. And in most cases, the biological systems are buffered so that their pHs are maintained. Um, here we have um, calculating the formal potential for this reaction, which is the reduction of dehydroascorbic acid, which is ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C. A, so it's oxidized form here, and then we can reduce it into the vitamin C form that um, we might take as a supplement or we might find in various fruits. Um, so it has two pKa values because it has two acidic protons. So it is going to be a um, polyprotic acid. So the first pKa value is 4.1, which means that it happens pretty easily. But the second pKa is 11.7 or 11.79, which is really, really very high. So um, wait, hang on, I'll fix that. Okay, so um, we abbreviate dehydroscorbic acid as D, so we don't have to write that name out all the time or that formula. And ascorbic acid is H2A. Um, this means that the reduction then becomes um, D plus 2H plus plus two electrons gives us H2A plus H2O. So here we have dehydroscorbic acid plus two protons plus two electrons gives us um, the um, ascorbic acid, which has been reduced plus water. So the Nernst equation then for this is going to have uh, the standard potential here, which is 0 0.390. Uh, it's going to have then the term, um, which is concentration dependent. So um, here it is given. So E is equal to the standard potential minus this term over 2. So N was previously here. It's going to be 2 because of the two electrons here. Um, times the log of the reaction quotient, which is given here. So it's the concentration of the um, ascorbic acid over the concentration of the dehydroascorbic acid times the concentration of protons squared. So calculating the formal potential. So D is not an acid or a base. So that means that the formal concentration of D is actually just equal to the concentration of D. Um, for H2A, which is the um, ascorbic acid, we can use the equation from the previous pages, where the concentration of ascorbic acid is equal to this, where it's um, H plus squared over the times the formal concentration of ascorbic acid over H plus squared plus H plus times K1, which is the first deprotonation, plus the product of the two K values. Um, so we then fill that in. So this is the other thing that I was saying. So like even though with the the the, the polyprotic systems, um, usually it's only the first one which actually matters. So that's what we actually use. So there were like other steps on the previous uh, slides, but really we're just using the first one uh, for the most part. So we fill these values in. Uh, we have E is equal to um, the standard potential minus uh, this concentration dependent term. So we filled in the formal concentration for H2A and we filled in the formal concentration for um, D, uh, which is here, um, times the concentration of the protons, because remember that was in the equation. So go back here. So we've got uh, products over reactants. So we still have this H plus squared term. Um, so which is rearranged to give this. So we've rearranged separated this out. So a property of logs um, you may have encountered from your math classes means that we can um, separate out uh, divisions um, so that they are um, differences instead. So we turn this term into these two terms here. Um, so uh, that means that the potential of the system is equal to this. And um, so setting then a H plus concentration to 10 to the minus seven, why is it 10 to the minus seven? Well, this is obtained from the pH because remember that um, usually for these biological systems, the pH is going to be seven. Um, that's why we have this um, term, this uh, standard potential prime. 
and filling in the values. So, and so we set the H plus concentration to this value. So we fill those in and filling in the values for E prime, or sorry, not E prime, the standard potential K1 and K2 will give a value of um, standard potential prime of plus 0 0.062 volts. So um, I kind of encourage you to um, have a look at this in uh, some detail. Maybe look up K values in the back of your textbook or even just online and see if you can fill in the values here um, to get um, to get this, uh, if it's possible. If it's not, just let me know. All right. Uh, this is where we'll stop because we've run out of time. Um, and then next time we will actually talk about the electrodes and how they work. So we'll be talking about things like um, the ion selective electrodes. We'll be talking about like how we can actually measure pH using electricity and other uh, nice things like that. So otherwise, thank you.